Hello, my name is Denzel, and in this video we'll be going over how I set up and work with the Animal Crossing textures and models inside of Blender. If you're worried about video length, it's because this video is split into three chapters. Chapter 1 is about furniture, structures, and clothing, chapter 2 is all about villagers, and chapter 3 is specifically all about the player model. Animating faces is going to be its own video, we've got a couple methods to show for that, so when it's ready I'll link it somewhere here. This video is also sponsored by Patreon. If you found anything here helpful, then consider supporting the channel. They get to see stuff early over there. Uh, but I digress, let's jump into things. I'm going to assume that you, the viewer, just downloaded that big old mega model dump. And if you didn't, the link to it is totally not in the description, don't even bother checking. But now you're in possession of some 60,000 files that I'm going to also assume that you aren't too familiar with how to work with in Blender. Uh, unless you do, then congratulations, you're free to skip ahead. If not, I'm going to explain some basic things. Within most folders, you're going to find a .dae file and three or more texture files. Well, the .dae file is just the model file. That can be imported to Blender no problem, but be sure to tick this import units toggle so that it doesn't come in at a massive scale. Next up is a quick explanation of these texture files. There's the ALB, which stands for albedo. It's just flat, shadowless color. Then there's this mixed texture. These are actually three texture files kind of sandwiched on top of each other. Occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And these channels can be accessed using a separate RGB node. Then there is the normal map, which is technically just a normal map. They're used to add further surface detail, but we gotta run it through a bit of a prep network before we can use it. If not, we get some weird looking results. You also might find a black and white OP map. These are opacity maps. Uh, they are masks for adding transparency or holes and stuff to parts of models. And that's it. Uh, let's hook them up. Inside of Blender, bring in your favorite model. I'm gonna be using the Ironwood Chair S and making sure the toggle is ticked and importing that into our scene. Uh, the first thing that I usually do is removing the armature. We don't really need it for working with, on, with inside of Blender. We can just unparent it and delete the armature. The second thing I usually do is select the model and quickly jump over to the edit tab, select all the vertices and merge them by distance so that it cleans up any loose vertices or uh, broken edges in the model. If we don't do this, then it'll introduce weird skinning and shadow problems later on. Jump on into the material for it, and let's also bring in the uh, materials for it. We're gonna bring in the albedo map, the mix map, and the normal map, and and then just kind of move them around to give us some space for them. Starting with the first one, uh, it's just the color map, which is flat color. This can be brought into the base color. Next up is the mix map. Uh, we're gonna wanna add a separate color node and then connect that to it. Generally within these maps, the red channel is the metalness, so that can be plugged into metalness. The green channel is ambient occlusion. That can be mixed in with the color. If you just put them together and add a uh, mix color node and set this to overlay, and that's going to let us add some contact shadow detail into the color channel. And the blue channel is usually roughness. You can just attach that and get yourself a result that looks something like this. Uh, lastly is this normal map. The first thing we want to do with it is set its color space from sRGB to non-color. This tells Blender that we don't need any of the color information that's within it. Um, just treat it like a black and white kind of texture map. Except we need to fix the color channels on this so that it's not uh, like this. It, it looks more like a, like a regular more normal map. If we just plug this into a normal map node, then we get this uh, strange black kind of um, appearance to it. And that's because this normal map here is missing data on the blue channel. So we're gonna fix that by grabbing this separate node and duplicating it and combining it again to another color node, uh, connecting red to red and green to green, but also adding a one into blue. And this changes it from looking like this to looking like a more typical normal map. And once that gets plugged into the normal and everything like that, we get, uh, you know, 
proper proper details and stuff. Wow, look at that, it's so cool and crisp. Uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of how to set these up. This method also works with any buildings and structures or floors and wallpapers, um, as well as clothing. But clothes can be a little bit funky. Sometimes you might run into the case where connecting the roughness channel to roughness yields this crazy reflective result and uh, doesn't really look the greatest. You can always try adding in a ramp and bringing that down to a more reasonable level of reflectivity. Or you might find that just not using the mix map as a whole and dialing in the spec and roughness manually can yield just as fine results. Sometimes you'll find that not every object will have roughness, so you're not gonna need to plug it in every single time. Sometimes you might find that the blue channel uh, actually looks better on specular rather than roughness but that comes down to personal taste really again you can always plug it in see how you like it dial it a little more and um and that's pretty much it for furniture buildings and clothing that should get you through like majority of the models now we can move on to villagers So working with villagers is a little bit of a mixed bag. They all come in in a state that isn't very intuitive to work with, so we kind of have to prepare them before we can uh, start working with them. I brought in a frog, but this method is going to work for pretty much any villager or NPC. Uh, the first thing that I usually do is strip them of the armature that they come with. Uh, this armature is technically usable if you import the model with um, with fixed leaf bones and find bone chains ticked. Uh, that'll import a model and armature that is technically usable and is probably fine to animate, but I usually don't really work with this. I often unparent the geometry from the base armature and just re-rig it myself using Rigify because that then provides me with a rig that's more animator friendly than, you know, trying to just grab bones from within the model. Uh, but this isn't a video about how to make rigs. You can find a bunch of tutorials on that online. The next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is just clean up this model. It comes in split into uh, into different kind of island subsections, one for the mouth, one for the eyes, and one for the rest of the body. And this is kind of not great when it comes to skinning the model later on because then we have these uh, split edges and seams on different chunks of geometry. So we're gonna to want to uh, take all three of these and hit Control J to join them all together into one object, jump into edit mode, selecting all the geo and then merging it by distance. And that's going to uh, merge and get rid of any duplicated vertices or uh, weld all of our seams together so it's one continuous piece of geometry. Uh, that's also going to automatically merge all of our materials together, which is going to make it a little easier to sw swap between them while we set them up. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. In terms of setting up the materials for the body, eyes, and mouth, it's the same general node setup as furniture and clothing and stuff. We can just grab all of this stuff. You can grab the mix, normal, and albedo, and then just kind of hook them up like regular nodes stuff. Uh, one thing that we have to do for the other body parts is be sure to bring in a UV map node so that we can tell you which texture what part of the body to assign these materials to uh, in this case it's the eyes so we're going to just select the eyes and then connect it to the vectors and yeah we're going to take all this and copy it and then move on to the mouth and paste it bam bam get a uv map looking pretty pretty spiffy except pretty much all the time the, the either the red or blue channel uh, won't really yield nice results in the metallic spec or roughness. So a lot of times it just comes down to personal preference. Um, there's also this information on the alpha channel for the color map that sometimes if you find your character's skin looking a bit dark, you can lump this into, I think roughness I had it. And that can, uh, and that can boost its color a ton, but also add some d d roughness to the model. Okay, now he's so bright and blue. Um, and honestly, that's all there is to villagers. Give them some clothing and you're good to go. You can also take them a step further and mix in the alpha channel into their spec and roughness while dialing it in with a ramp. 
uh, incorporate the Fresnel node to fake rim lights, or even use channels in their mix map as masks for other effects, uh, like to make their eyes more reflective. At this point, you're free to stretch any creative liberties that you'd like with them, because uh, you don't really have a lot to work with to begin with, so. But that is Villagers, and now we should be able to move on to the last. Lastly are the player characters. Honestly, they're not that much harder to set up compared to like a villager or a couch, uh, but they do still require a decent amount of steps. So we'll begin by bringing in our player.dae file. I'm just going to copy this location and inside of Blender, go up to File, Import, Colada, D, D, this, and uh, paste it in there while also taking the Import uh, Units button. We're going to import this guy, and there it is, our character. But like we did for the villagers, I'm going to just take all of the uh, geometry and unparent it from our armature. Uh, you can pick whatever nose you want. It has the square nose, the oval nose, and the triangle. Uh, I like the triangle nose, so I'm just going to delete these. But we're going to take everything, the all the, the islands of the face and the body and the legs and the ears and the other ear and join them together by hitting Control and J. And that's going to join everything into one model. We're excluding the nose because it's, it's a whole separate model. Then I'm going to take the skin. I'm going to jump into edit mode and merge all the verts again and now that the geometry is ready we can move into materials to make my life a little bit easier I usually opt to not use the the mix texture for the players I've often just found it to be more cumbersome trying to incorporate it than it is to just leave it and dial in the uh, the roughness and spec myself although we will be using it for the eyes and the mouth later but just not really for the the grand scale of things so because of that I know that I'm only really going to be plugging in uh, base color and normal map into this uh, principal BSDF so I can actually just group this and get rid of all of this stuff uh this and this and then we get boom a, a uniform skin shader baby uh, and then we can just copy and paste this into all of the different materials then we will add a uv nope add a uv map to our uh skin texture this guy is set to the body skin texture coordinate, and that will move the texture to the body of our character. And to add color, we add a RGB node, RGB node, and multiplying this, if you just grab this color and type in multiply, uh, this with this and with a factor of one into our base shader. And that's gonna then give us the ability to color our character's skin to uh, any color that we're looking for really. But we don't wanna have to edit this in each material. So we're gonna group it, call it skin, and then use this node group in every other material. This lets us only have to edit this one node and the change gets applied to all of our materials. For the legs slash socks, it's the same thing. We can just copy and paste the same nodes over and change the UV coordinates from body to socks, as well as the texture from body to socks. This would also be where you hook up any of the sock materials. For the cheeks, we'll do the same. Copy and paste the same nodes and change the UV and texture. Now, there's a couple different cheek options that you can pick from, but we'll just go with zero. And that's going to put cheeks onto our character. But to fix the cheek color, we're going to want to essentially just take our cheeks gray albedo and move that into the factor of our, of our multiply, uh, removing our base color from A changing this from multiply to mix and that's going to then make it so that whatever color we have pumped into a here is going to be the color for the cheeks and that's pretty much it for the cheeks they're looking pretty pretty cool pretty snazzy uh next up we'll do the mouth i think because that's a bit easier oh my god mouth is wild to do the mouth, we first have to source and find the mouth that we want animal crossing has da -da 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 several what? More than four, didn't it? Oh yeah, I guess it only has four. Uh, Animal Crossing has four. We're just going to be using the default one instead. You are free to bring in uh, Beto, the mix, and the normal map for it. And we're going to hook them all up in a slightly different fashion, um, but not wildly different. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is add in a UV map 
for the back side of these guys so that the mouth pops up in the mouth region. Uh, we're also going to add a mix texture and we're going to separate the color from the mix texture here, but put the red channel in as the factor for the mix. And the B is going to be our skin node that we made earlier. And that should give us the same uh, skin tone as earlier. Uh, it looks kind of off because we still have yet to hook up the normal map. Set this guy to non-color data, uh, bring in a separate color, bring in a combined color, put that there, put that there, add a one, and bring in a normal map. Connect that to that. And that's going to uh, not fix our problem. In fact, it even looks kind of weird. Why is that? And that's because we need to do two things that I forgot to mention. One is to flip the green channel in our normal map with a invert node. This reverses the way that light reflects off the surface and can fix some shadow problems. And two is to set the mix map to either raw or non-color. This then lets us smooth the colors for the mouth. And that's it for the mouth. Now we can move on to the eyes. Go and find the eyes that you, that you like. I'm gonna be using uh, these eyes, I guess, player eye zero zero. And right off the bat, these textures look kind of weird. They're just kind of like hovering pupils in a transparent background. We will be using the mixed textures for these as well as the normals. So just be sure to bring in all three, the eyes and the mix map and the normal map. The first thing that we want to do is just prepare our materials. For the color, be sure to change the alpha from straight to packed. I forgot to mention that earlier. But for the mix channel, we're going to want to switch this guy to non-color, as well as the normal map as well. The next thing that we, that we want to do is layer our eyes over top of our skin color. And we can do so by first separating our um, color channels from the mix. This is going to give us a mask for our eyes. And then two other channels that we're not really going to use, or at least I haven't really found much use for. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is bring in our skin group. And this is again just a RGB color wheel in a node group so that if any changes that we make to this affects the skin color across our entire character. We're essentially just going to mix this skin into the eyes here by adding these two together into a mix node but changing it from mix to add and using the red channel as a mask and that's going to give us this uh, look and result but uh, it's okay we're still working on it just just give me just give us some more just, uh, the next thing that we want to do is prepare our pupils here and we do so by actually just utilizing the uh, alpha channel here from our eye color if we drag this out bring in our uh, mix node changing this from add to multiply uh, whatever color that we put into this now will be the color of our eyes uh, the last thing that we want to do is add these two back over top of each other so that we can layer our eyes onto our eyes we can do so by just essentially taking this mix node and duplicating it and adding them together like so with a factor of uno and that's going to give us uh, pretty much this kind of looking result that we can then pump into base color. The last thing that we're going to need to do is, is just get this normal map in. So I went ahead and made a group out of the normal map from the mouth. It's still just a separate color invert node to invert the green channel, uh, combined back together with the combined color and uh, adding in a value of one and then running that through a normal map. But we can take this guy, go back to our eyes, paste it, connect these two together and bada boom bada squish. You got yourself a villager with face faces and stuff. You can change this eye color. You can change the skin color. You can, I don't know, add clothes and stuff to it now and run around, make a video. And that's pretty much it in terms of how to set up their faces. Though one last tip, the textures aren't the highest resolution. Up close, they can look kind of pixelated, but if you change their texture interpolation from linear to cubic, that can smooth and average out the pixels, giving you a clearer looking image. It's nice if you do close-ups and stuff. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys found some knowledge that was useful. And if not, um, thanks for watching anyways. You're free to take whatever was useful and discard what's not. Uh, if you have any cool tips or tricks, you're free to leave them in the comments. Check out the video about faces, check out some videos about Unreal, and check out the Patreon. Everything helps and you get your name in the credits. Other than that, I don't think I have much more to tell you or say or give you. So um, subscribe and yeah, thanks for watching.